Hello, first of all, uh, I'm glad to be here, even through online presenting this work. I wanted to apologize for not being able to be there in person. I had a back injury last week and I'm still recovering from it. So I couldn't travel. So this is the work I done uh, during my master's program at University of Brasilia. So professor Celia Haile is my advisor and Gabriel Ramos is a professor from a university in the south of Brazil. And he also assists on this work. I'm currently affiliated with Numenta where I'm a research scholar. So the work is on experience sharing between cooperative reinforcement learning agents. So I'm gonna give a big, uh, quick background on reinforcement learning, deep reinforcement learning, which are required to understand this work. I won't dive into details as we don't have a lot of time. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to restrict my presentation to 15 minutes only, but I'm sure you will, you're all familiar with this. So this is the classic reinforcement learning loop. You have an agent, the agent takes an action, uh, action impacts environment and then the agents transition to a next state which is given by st plus one and receives a reward from the envir environment which is given there by r of t plus one so this can be represented by a markov decision process which is composed of a set of states s a set of actions a a transition function uh, which is given by the probability probability of reaching state s one given you're in state s zero and i and take action a and a reward function with a function of state and action. So there are three main approaches for reinforcement learning. You can either search directly in the space of policies. Uh, so we have the class of algorithms called a policy gradient algorithm, or you can build a value function where you assign a value to each state or state action pair, and you can use the value function to derive an optimal policy. This is uh, the most common algorithm in skew learning belongs to this class, and we also have hybrid approaches like actor critic algorithms. So, talking a bit about Q learning, so in Q learning, you try to learn an actual value function, and you're going to derive your optimal policy based on that learn action value function. So, the algorithm is very simple. Uh, you loop through a number of episodes, and at each episode, while you don't reach a terminal state, you choose an action according to a policy pi which is based on your current actual value function. You execute that action, and then you update your state to the new state you observe. And you update your Q function based on the reward uh, you perceive from the environment. So you get a difference between the reward you expected to receive and the reward you, you perceive, and you update your function based on that. So this, this here shows uh, Q learning in the tabular format, and each uh, square here is a state, and the state is divided between four actions going up, down, left, or right, and it shows the Q table, uh, the Q function, which represents the table here, as it's updated after five episodes, and as it's updated after a thousand episodes. So after a thousand episodes, you can see you have, uh, you can simply follow the maximum uh, Q value for each state action pair in order to reach the reward of one. So deep Q network is an extension of Q learning into a complex state, uh, complex state space. So you can no longer use the table if your state space is continuous or complex. And an option is to use a different model to approximate your Q function. And one of those models is a neural network. So we come to DQN, which was published in 2013 by uh, DeepMind by David Silver, which is now in DeepMind. And the difference in DQN, the main difference is that you're no longer going to store the Q function in a table, you're going to store in a neural, neural network, so parameterized model. And instead of learning uh, to avoid the issue of overfitting to the most recent state, every time you observe a transition, instead of using that single transition to do a step of stochastic gradient descent, you're going to store the transition in a replay buffer. And at each step, you're going to sample from the replay buffer and do a batch gradient descent. So that's going to ensure your gradient's uh, smooth and you're not going to overfit to the most uh, recent observation you've seen. So that's the main difference that uh, made neural networks uh, work well for the Q-learning problem. So this schematic taken from the Gorilla paper from 2015, and it shows that the environment stores the experience in the replay memory, and that replay memory is, is later used to update your Q function. So an innovation uh, from 2015 is the prioritized replay, where instead of randomly sampling experiences from the buffer at, uh, at each step, you assign a priority to each experience, and that priority 
is the temporal difference error. So this can be seen as a measure of surprise. So if, if that surprise is big, the priority of the experience is going to be big and the agent is going to keep replaying that same experience until the priority is small. So the experiences, are, they are sampled from a soft max distribution, which is based on the priority. And sampling from this distribution a lot ensures you that every experience has a probability, even though it might be small, of, of being sampled at each step. So that covers the background. I move to proposal so we don't waste a lot of time. So our proposal here, uh, our goal was to investigate experience sharing between two or more agents, which are learning in similar environments. Our motivation to do that is that reinforcement learning is difficult to implement. A major challenge in the field is to improve sample efficiency. And so that's a, that's a problem we we're working on at the University of Brasilia. And we had this hypothesis that independent cooperative learners could benefit from sharing experiences the same way a human does. And our findings is that agents don't benefit from just randomly sharing experiences as we, we first expected it would, but benefits can be achieved if the experiences shared are specifically targeted at unexplored regions of the state space. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna show this better on the results. So our architecture is this, where we have uh, two agents. So each one, each one of them is learning in the same environment. It's shown here as two environments as each one has, um, it perceives its own environment, but uh, they can be similar, they could be shared. So agent one takes a, uh, selects an action A from Polis Pi. Uh, the environment uh, returns with uh, transition, uh, the next state and the reward. So you have this experience which is given by state action, uh, next state and reward, and the agent stores that experience in the replay buffer. And the agent sample experience at the learning stage to improve its Polis Pi. So this is the common loop. The difference here is that at uh, each episode, at the end of the episode, the agent's gonna send a request for experiences, which is gonna be, are gonna be shared to a common blackboard. And in this request board, uh, these requests are gonna be distributed amongst agents learning in the same environment. And an agent, is gonna, when he receives the request from the request board, he can share experiences to the other agent's inbox and this experience are gonna be flushed into other agent's replay buffer. So the, flux, uh, the flow is that you receive the request, you share the experiences, and then the experiences are added to the replay buffer of a second agent. So this is the overall flow. The algorithm is also simple. So you initialize your environment and your agents and you initialize your request board. And while not all agents have completed for each agent, you're gonna see if you have experiences in your inbox, gonna add them to your buffer. Then you play the episode, and here you already have the benefits of the added experiences in your buffer. And then you add, after the end of the episode, you add a new request to the request part. Sorry. So you have a round where each agent in the environment is gonna check the request part for available requests. And for each request, he's gonna look at its buffer, sample a batch of experience that matches the request from other agents, and they're gonna place those experiences in the requesting agent's inbox. So the request agent can later add it to its own buffer. So we investigated four methods. I'm gonna go a little bit more into detail in to each of them. So one of them is just naive sharing, where we just share a random set of experiences. The other one, we call it focus experience sharing, where each agent sends a request, select, uh, asking only for experiences which are which belong to part of the state action space the agent hasn't explored yet. And then a third method we call prioritize its space. So the, agents, the agent who shares experiences only share the experiences which have high priority on its buffer. And we also have a combined method which combines the priority method with the focus method. So we're going to a little bit more detail. So in naive experience sharing, uh, a student, so here we're using the teacher-student uh, nomenclature, so, but keep in mind that all agents could be both student and teacher at the same time. So they are, they're requesting experience and they're also receiving experience at all times. So a, a student requests, uh, issues a request, the request has no information, the naive experience sharing, and the teacher selects CAP experiences from a buffer, and CAP is a hyperparameter of the model and it represents the communication bandwidth and the cost of communication. So you, there is a limited number of experiences you can share. 
So in the naive, you just randomly select experience and share. In the focus approach, when the student requests, he requests for experiences which are specifically part of an unexplored region of the state action space. And the teacher are going to select experiences which belong to that region. So each agent, they maintain an occupant's grid, which keeps track of how many times each region of the state action space has been visited. And in continuous state action spaces, this occupant grid is the discretization over the state action space. So here's a schematic showing that the agent receives the experience here in blue, stores in its replay buffer, which has this occupancy grid on top of it. And then when he issues a request, he sees which regions of the state action space he hasn't explored, issues a request, and the other agents are going to get that request is just a mask. So this operation runs in all of N, applies that mask to its uh, experience buffer and see if it has experience which are compatible with the request. And if they have, they're going to share those experiences. And the agent who receives the experiences add them to its buffer. So next we have prioritized experience sharing, which are applicable to models which use priority replay. And in this case, the student requests uh, has no additional information, but when the teacher sample experiences, he uses a soft max distribution based on the priorities he assigned to each of uh, the experience he has. So the priorities are based on the teacher priorities, not the student priorities. And we also investigated, so here is a summary of all the four methods, naive, focus, and prioritize, and we also investigate the hybrid method of using priority and uh, focus experience sharing. So I'll briefly cover a related work. So the first work we, uh, we got inspiration from was from Tan in 1993. And I would quote him saying that if cooperation is done intelligently, each agent can benefit from other agents' instantaneous information, episodic experience, or learned knowledge. So Tan proposed several different approaches of sharing experiences, and these were later explored in the uh, knowledge, knowledge sharing literature. So we have other papers from Klaus, Torin, Taylor, and Da Silva exploring the teacher-student student framework, but using action advice instead of sharing experiences. And we also have some other uh, newest paper exploring experience sharing in heterogeneous environments as well. Uh, it's also important to note some, uh, some work which are focused on increased buffer diversity. So in this works by DeepMind, uh, we have the Gorilla framework from 2015 and the Apex from 2018, in which you have agents, but they share, they're not independent agents. So in Gorilla, they, you have a centralized action value function uh, which is shared amongst all agents in Apex. You also have concurrently learning agents and they share a centralized buffer. So the main difference between our approach, so we get the same benefits that you get in Apex, for example, that you have uh, different agents with different policies and you, uh, and you benefit from the diversity of those different policies. But in this case, we don't have a centralized buffer. So we wanted to extend our work to cases where um, each agent is fully independent and they could even uh, share experience, for example, during a moment that they would be in contact with each other, for example, robot, uh, robots learning in the warehouse or self-driving cars, for example. So the benefits of our work is that there is no extra storage since the buffer is already uh, accumulated in DQN. We don't have a centralized replay buffer as in Gorilla or Apex. We assume that communication rewards costly. It's not instantaneous and it's of limited bandwidth. And this can, could be easily extended to industrial settings, which uh, are composed of independently learning agents. The restrictions, uh, the work as of it is now assumes agents are homogeneous, and the environment is also uh, the same, but this could be extended to heterogeneous agents and or environments. So I'll quickly go through the experiments. Uh, we run two problems. One is a classical control problem, and the other is a navigation problem. So each trial we show consists of several episodes, and a trial ends when the agents achieve the goal, which can take multiple episodes. This is the common setting reinforcement learning. So for each experiment, we run several trials to account for the stochasticity in the environment and in the model, and all the results show are therefore distributions. So this is the cart ball. It's a very classical problem, so you have the small cart, and the action is to move it left or right, and the goal is to keep the pole upright. And so the results we have here, 
So ETC is the number of episodes you take to complete a task. So in regular DQN, the agent takes around 300 episodes to complete this task. Uh, in the setup we had, uh, if you add naive experience sharing, you still take about the same amount of time. But if you add the focus experience sharing approach, you can reduce that to about half the time. And even though you are not sharing a lot of experience, I don't have this data here, but the number of experience shared was um, small. But since you were only sharing selectively focus experience that would help the agent improve its policy, then you get this uh, major improvement here. We also look at the prioritized replay. So prioritized replay in this uh, in classical control doesn't do a lot better than you can. Uh, if you add the prioritized approach, it actually hurts. But when you add the focus, it again improves over the, the baseline. So you can see here in graphs, the blue one is, the blue histogram here is the QN, and the green is uh, naive experience sharing. They're almost the same. But the focus experience sharing is significantly different than the DQN. And in the paper, we also have uh, p-values for our KS tests. Uh, here, we show the learning dynamics. So again, we have uh, DQN here in the middle. And DQN, if you had naive experience sharing, it's actually worse. It, it takes uh, a bit longer to learn, but then you end up achieving the task at almost the same time. While if you had the focus experience sharing, you learn a lot faster and you actually converge. While here, it takes a lot longer to converge. And you can see it's not just a matter of adding more time, because if the same agent runs up to 400 episodes, uh, if you get this here, you only have two agent sharing experiences. Just two agent sharing experiences could learn in 100 episodes, but one agent couldn't learn in 400. And here's the same graphs for a prioritized replay. And here we also see that behavior, where if you add the focus aspect, you get a lot better improvement. And uh, again, the learning dynamics, here, the prioritized replay actually does a lot, a bit better in the, the prioritized focus in the beginning, but the, the focus one uh, converges at some point while the regular one just stays almost the same level. We also investigate in using more complex form of discretization. So the results we have here on focus experience sharing, they're using just a simple discretization over the state action space. So we try tile coding as well. So tile coding makes it uh, more expensive and it actually didn't improve results, it just reduce uh, variancy. So to focus on efficiency, we would just uh, regular, discretization, regular discretization would bring the benefits we show here. So we try the same thing on uh, Project Malmo, which is an open version of Minecraft engine and is customized for reinforcement learning experiments. So the navigation, the problem here was to find a goal. So the agent is small room and has to see the goal. So this image here is the state space. It's what the agent sees at any point in time and the goal is achieving uh, finding the box. So regular DQN uh, has a hard time solving this problem. It takes about 78 episodes. If you had naive experience sharing, actually increases to 94. But if you had uh, the focus aspect, you decrease from 78 to 66. And here, the DQN PR performs a lot better than regular DQN, this is prioritized replay. It solves in about uh, 10 to 11 episodes. And you, when you add the focus aspect of it, you can uh, get it down to six episodes, which is fast as it can, actually. So here, showing the same graphs, you can see the difference. So the conclusion we have is that selectively sharing experiences for unexplored regions of the state space which we call focus experience sharing, it improves the QN performance by a factor of two, as we've seen in the, in the card poll and then in the ball when the, using the DQN PR, compared to naive experience sharing and compared to single agents. So doubling the number of epochs for single agent doesn't achieve similar performance. So it's just not a matter of, of training more. You actually have a benefits on, uh, of these varied policies from uh, agents exploring different regions of the space. And we also, concluded that simple discretization of state action space is fast. It runs in OFN, it's just a mask over the, the tensor, and it gives optimal results. And using tile coding doesn't improve average performance, but just reduce variance. So if the focus on efficient, simple discretization would uh, work. And at future work, we're looking at extending this to larger number of agents. We run some uh, preliminary experiments on it. Uh, adapt this to Markov games formulation, which is a common multi-agent system. So here we're just using uh, independent learners. 
And we also want to combine with methods to handle uh, heterogeneous agents or heterogeneous environments. So it can be more easily extended to a larger class of problems. So thank you a lot, and uh, I'll take questions now.